Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take your top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, these are the things that smart money is doing. And the question is, are you doing the same things or did you fall victim to thinking that anything's really different? So first up, whales acquire 170,000 Bitcoin in the past six weeks. And actually, what's more surprising is how much they've accumulated in the last 10 days. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. On top of the fact that uh, XRP climbs 18%, watch out after Ripple announcement. That is great news for the XRP army. Also, we're gonna just do a quick follow-up as uh, Senator Warren backtracks on cryptocurrency and says it's actually good. So this is how democracy works. You hear some information and it actually change your mind. And then we'll quickly just go over the uh, theta drop. But first up, let's take a look at what's on the market. So today's a good day, it's a green day. Uh, $1.5 trillion market cap, we're up 2%. I'd like to see those types of, uh, of moves in the positive direction, but you know, whatever it is. If it goes down, you can dollar cost average and accumulate. If it goes up, you can implement your uh, exit strategy if you want to, or just sit on your hands. It doesn't really matter. Just watch the fireworks go about. So here's what's going on as far as uh, the coins themselves. So Bitcoin is uh, doing pretty good. Almost at 40, wow, almost at 40,000. 39,536 in the last uh, 24 hours, we're up 4%. Nice, Ethereum, 2288. Maybe it can hit to 2,500, who knows? And uh, Tethers, nobody cares. Binance, 2%. Cardano, up 2%. XRP, watch out. 11%, 12%. Pretty good. Uh, Doge, everything else is ending up fantastically. Wow, 11%. 12% for Terra. Good job for Terra holders. And AMP, 11%. I know there was some kind of uh, um, uh, rumor that AMP was going to be used with Amazon. That, got, that fell flat, but we talked about that yesterday. Also, if you're uh, looking to trade some things, not a great trader, take a look at uh, Trinity tr or Trade the Chain. This is what uh, we use every single day. And with 90% assurance, not these one with not enough tweets. Let's take a look at this one. Woof, between negative 15 and 20% up. Redcoin. Look at Redcoin, Kava.io, Monacoin, Synthetics, Near Protocol, and Sushi. Uh, if you can get on your uh, your trading fix. All right, that's what's going on in the market. Let's take a look what is going on uh, for today. So this article about smart money, it always, never well, it never surprises me um, how the more things change, the more they, they stay the same. Nothing really changes. And everybody always tells me, Rob, you don't understand this time's different. This time is different. The market's going to totally crash and go away. I'm like, okay, I mean, maybe, I don't know. And uh, I just keep saying the same thing and the same things keep happening. Smart money comes in there. They buy these dips at massive amounts. They, you know, they wait for a certain time. They don't buy every single dip, but in this one, they've been buying uh, pretty aggressively. So uh, if you were fooled into thinking that, uh, you know, this market was going to go away and you had all those FUD stories, which is why I cover these FUD stories to tell you about the FUD and then tell you why it doesn't matter. Uh, these are the things you have to watch out for to harden yourself as an as a long-term investor. Now, look, this is just investment opinion, not investment advice, but these are the things that I see. So what is going on here? So oh, here we go. Whales acquire 170,000 Bitcoins. So according to a recent tweet by Sentiment, Bitcoin whales or wallets holding between 110,000 Bitcoins. That's pretty good have been purchasing Bitcoin since May. And what happened in May? Well, we had an all-time high and people sold off, sold off, and uh, they just waited for these huge dips, 50%, and now they're buying back up again. Not rocket science. When the largest crypto began descending from its all-time high. Okay, over the past five weeks, they, let's just say, let's just call them smart money or whales, have accumulated another 130,000 Bitcoin. That was in five weeks, 130,000. But in 10 days, just in 10 days, 40,000 Bitcoins have been accumulated. Here's a, a nice little chart right here which shows you what's going on. Rip to the moon, Alice. And that is essentially the big news. So I will just say this. If you got fooled and you thought, eh, you know, nothing's really going to happen and these, these whales are going to go away and they're going to put it into equities or something like that, don't feel bad because it's just, it's just one of those things where you have to get used to. And sometimes you have to see it like three, five, 20 times before you're like, okay, I get it. It's the same thing all the time. And uh, just harden yourself and uh, you know, find these types of, uh, of information. And maybe at some point you can finally go, you know what? I think I see where it's going. I don't care about these foot articles. I don't care about the regulation. I don't care about uh, senators talking about whatever else or, or, or this person saying that it's going to go to zero. It's not it's just how it is. 
And uh, you can just start to, you know, make those moves appropriately and be a little bit more ready. So that is that little piece right here. And there was also a nice little snippet I wanted to bring to light. This was from Sansomit as well. And it's very strange. It talks about, let me blow this up a little bit. So it says here, Bitcoin is seeing wild patterns of coins moving on and off exchanges. There was plus almost 30,000 Bitcoin inflow versus outflow. And what they're talking about is this image right here. You can see it. This green uh, lines, which are pretty erratic, these are, of course, uh, the price of Bitcoin. And you can see it over here. It goes from 29.5 all the way up to 65.2. So this green part here, as you can see on the middle part, you can't see my mouse, unfortunately, sorry. But uh, that at the very middle is when Bitcoin hit roughly 65,000. And you can see that, uh, of course, there was a lot of, of volatility at that point. And then as soon as it dropped, people started to accumulate and they took it off of the exchanges. And now going all the way to the right-hand side, you can see a lot of people put it on the exchanges uh, early July, and now they're massively taking it off. Uh, but we can see that the actual Bitcoin price is going up. So who knows where that is going, but in all honesty, uh, it really doesn't matter because if you just play the long game, usually it works out for you. Again, not investment advice, this is just what I'm doing. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece, XRP, watch out. So I like, I like positive stories about crypto. I know some people hate XRP and some people love XRP. It doesn't matter. It's just, a, it's just an investment, really. It's not like it's uh, you know, gonna take anything over uh, as far as like family or something like that. But these are great stories. So what is going on here? So uh, apart from the general bullish trend, XRP, let me, let me highlight this so you can see it. XRP price surged after the parent company Ripple reached an understanding with the SBI, uh, which is the major money transfer firm in Japan, and Coins.ph, mobile payments firm in the Philippines. And this is good news, but what the heck is going on? So this partnership aims to enhance remittance options for Japanese-based Filipinos through Ripple's on-demand liquidity, ODL. Ripple uses its X-Rapid international payment system uh, to provide ODL to users wishing to perform financial transactions. Okay, so that's pretty much the big stuff here. And I'll get to that in a second, to the uh, double bottom. But I just want to make sure everybody knows. So like, when you're transferring money uh, between banks and the SWIFT system, all these banks, they have to pre-fund all these other international banks with their currency. So if I want to transfer money over to from America to Mexico, well, that bank has to have dollars and pesos. And then also, if you want to transfer it over to, to Europe, it is, you know, all the different uh, currencies that are over there, uh, the euro and the dollar and whatever else you want to have. And they all have to pre-fund, which is quite a, kind of expensive on top of the fact that the transaction fees are pretty darn high. That's where the banks make the money. The money. So with XRP, what they said is like, look, because of this distributed ledger, there is a, a X rapid and X current. So X current is kind of like, it's pretty much the old way of doing things, kind of like Swift. It's all about uh, communications and uh, really just, just text going back and forth. And it really doesn't do too much. It helps out a little bit, but the big thing here is X rapid. So instead of having to pre-fund everything and really uh, increase the cost, X rapid is called on-demand liquidity because on the other side, you just have the XRP ledger and you can just start to transfer funds around just to the ledger and you don't have to pre-fund anything. And that's where the whole magic kind of comes into it. So XRP versus X ledger, that is a big thing. So then to finish this up, XRP jump creates a double bottom. Uh, after XRP sharp rise following the announcement, technical indicators showed a double bottom indicating that XRP might remain bullish throughout the temporary trading ses sessions. So I'll just say this, for technicals, I don't know um, that you can actually say that it's gonna be bullish for a huge amount of time. I mean, these are all indicators. There's one indicator that says it's bullish, then there's a couple that might say it's a little bit bare. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, technicals, TA can uh, take you a lot of pretty far places as far as like trying to get into a position and out of position, but to just go, yeah, it's gonna be bullish for you know uh, quite a long time. Eh, sure, grain of salt. Anyhow, that's what's going on with XRP. So let's take a look at what's going on with Senator Warren as she backtracks some information. So I know people don't, some people really hate Elizabeth Warren. Some people love her to death. Same thing. 
But uh, it, on this channel, it's not political. It's just these are the types of things that as far as putting information out there, as far as regulation. And yesterday, we talked about how uh, Senator Warren was not a fan of cryptocurrency. And then like 24 hours, she like turns, you know, does a total 180. Not a total 180, but uh, she leaves the door open. And here's what's going on. A known skeptic of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, uh, Warren appeared to have soft her stance in the crypto industry in a CNBC squawk box. She states that digital currencies could be an instrument to bank the unbanked. And I got to agree with her. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, we're doing great things over in El Salvador, so why not? She states this, there has been an enormous failure by the big banks to reach consumers all across the country. Digital currencies and central bank digital currencies may be an answer there. Uh, I will applaud that. That sounds good. But she states the question we have to ask is to look at the design of crypto to see where it may be better, but also see where it may inject its own risks into the system. And uh, look, the same thing. I mean, two big champions of cryptocurrency uh, is uh, Toomey, uh, Senator Toomey, uh, Congressman Toomey, I think he is, and Senator Loomis from Wyoming. So when they started to talk about it, they said the exact same thing. They're like, hey, this is going to really help a lot of people. But we need to take a look at you know some of the pitfalls that pe that has been addressed. So I'm actually kind of blown away. It actually took this less amount of time. That's the whole thing of the, of, of the democracy. People come in with their ideas. They kind of flesh it out. They kind of work together and go, okay, well, I see your point here. Let's work on this. Or I don't really see that there. And this is why I don't see that point. So as far as like movement, hey, if we can keep doing this, Maybe we'll get an ETF approved by the SEC. Who knows? Crazier things have happened. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And lastly, or next to last, I guess, just so you know that uh, the Theta drop or the Theta NFT uh, drop is open in an hour and a half, which is probably when I'll have this video up because I got to edit so much. I don't really edit that much. And uh, this is what we have. So just like yesterday, if you uh, purchase the NFT, there's a private crypto portfolio consultation. You get a live Zoom session with me, uh, YouTube brand shout out. If you got like a business, you want to buy something like that, I'll talk about your business on my channel. Within reason, there's some businesses I will not talk about. So uh, I reserve the right to, to be like, uh, hey, I'm not going to talk. Or I can't talk about, like if, if you're in gambling, I can't talk about that on YouTube. I'm sorry. Uh, we do enough gambling on uh, as traders. And then uh, there's also the V-neck. And also this one here is my favorite. This is uh, the chosen one. And uh, that is uh, 10 bucks. And you can, there's, there's an infinite, uh, there's a ton of them allowed, but it's only available for 24 hours. So that is it. Link in the description. And that is the token drop. And here are my final thoughts about what's going on, which I got to tell you, that first piece was really the big story to me. And I hope it's, hope, helps you to realize that these things that, that people talk about, like Guggenheim CEO, uh, Scott Menard, and JP Morgan talking about how they'll never let their, um, their people get into cryptocurrency. And these different banks who just you know, say how awful crypto and they're not gonna do anything. Or even Amazon who comes out and says, we're not doing anything with crypto, yet they're hiring for a crypto professional. So like all these different FUD stories that you hear, and you think ah, it's not never going to come back because I mean we're just in this lull and we're going to be in this crypto winter for three years. I just I personally don't see it like that. I see there's just too many rails that have been built over the last four years once I got in to what's going on. There's just too much money to make this thing stop. There's too many projects that are doing so too much good. World Mobile Token being one of them and Meld. And uh, I just think that there's. For this train to get stopped anytime soon in its tracks, it's not now. We haven't hit that parabolic, crazy uh, movement like we did in 2017. I mean, look, we went from Bitcoin. We just doubled our market cap. That's not, that's nothing, nothing. I mean, $2.5 trillion. You know, the market cap of gold is 12 trillion. What does that do? So, I mean, I own gold and silver. Don't beat me up. I just don't see how we can't, <laughs> just makes no sense to me how we can be at 1.5 trillion and gold's at 12 trillion dollars and i'm like what does it really do you can wear it on your wrist who cares and then uh you know it, it can be a store of value i'm not going to get into it all i'm trying to say is i think that's on the horizon we're going to see some fireworks look at q4 2021 or even q1 2022 and uh, i just had an interview with uh, uh one of the guys at avalanche for cryptocurrency 
big things are coming on the pipe in that time frame and it seems like everything's happening around that time so that's all i got look uh that is it for today so if you liked the video thumbs up subscribe i really appreciate you stopping by and watching the whole thing at the very end uh that is it for today see you on the next one